Hey, welcome to High Footy Fire, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leaning towards the singularity. I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Grace. It's High Footy Fire. It's High Footy Fire. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> it has a name. Episode 20 for the, the 20th of June? Yeah. Fuck yeah. It's going good. We're in double double digits. Hells yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, yeah, for this week, uh, Ericsson uh, talking about 2020, 20 uh, ideas about the, the year 2020 from 20 different experts. Sweet. Um, there's the IBM Watson computer, which is taking on Jeopardy. That's pretty cool. Uh, iRobot sending robots into the Gulf to autonomously check stuff out. And we're going to talk a little bit about the, the neural network concept that we've kind of the singularity got going thing. for the singularity, yeah. Cool. Oh, uh, my three. Uh, there's this great new 3D video teleconferencing system. You should check it out. It's pretty sweet. Uh, next one is a Guardian article about where the internet is going. It's pretty cool. And then the last one is this great application how you can actually join this be a visiting fellow of the Singularity Institute. Doesn't really require much. So, yeah. Listen for a while and you can find out how. Yeah, see? I, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> So you have to watch it to the end now, or you could just skip. If you go for probably about the, the 20 minute, 24 minute, you'd be roughly about right. You don't want to skip us though, come no, on. No, I know. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty stuff. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Okay. Um, yeah, we, we've seen that Ericsson, uh, they did this campaign, they're calling it 2020 Shaping Ideas. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen tons of companies do it. Um, mm. Microsoft has done it. The, the AT&T um, did it. They, the the YouTube device. ones were just yeah. brilliant. So we're right. Um, but these guys are taking a different approach. They aren't so much doing um, what they think the future will be, but they're just going around interviewing people oh, okay. who are really cool. Like they've got uh, roughly 20 videos. I think they're adding, they've got a few more to add. Mm -hmm. But it's basically three minute um, video interviews with um, some really you know, high, high level people in their, in their fields. Yeah. Like they've got um, Vince Cerf, who was one of the guys who, uh, one of the founders of the internet. He's now like the chief uh, evangelist for Google. He's talking about you know, where the internet's going. That's very um, Google talk. That was a good Google talk. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of... I don't know, there's a lot of good ones. I, I went through them all. What did they mainly say? Like, um, I, I haven't watched them. I think that the big thing was just how much technology is really going to be the savior of the future. Nice, okay. Which yeah. Is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds mean, about right. Pretty much, yeah. It's like, all our world problems, they're going to be solved by technology and young people. Okay. Like, there, was, there was one guy who had a big... Oh, I think this guy. George Yeo? I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, there's another one. Hang on. Um, growing Up Digital. Yeah, this guy. Um, Don Pap well. Scott. Author of Wikinomics. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, well, yeah. That's why. Um, yeah. He's on John Stewart, I think. He, he's, yeah, yeah he, he's talking about how young people are really driving this whole revolution of change and actually you yeah. know, they're keeping up with the technology. And especially mobile phones, because uh, mobile phones, you know, there's billions and billions of them. Yeah, well that's at the computer joining us, hey. And we're going to be bringing in like two billion new people into the internet sort of global world very soon. So, yeah, go through them. They're, they're just three minutes each, so, you well, know. Which one you... was your favourite one? Did like, many stand out? Like that guy about uh, the children being yeah, like that guy, thing. Yeah, that guy, Don Tapscott. Did uh, they have any cool like predictions for George 2020? Yeo. Like what, what, what was, like you're saying like, you know, technological no. saviours and all of that, whereas any like overarching theme? Were there anything like you were saying mobile phone before? Uh, yeah, I think the mo I think a lot of them were just mentioning the mobile phone. Right. But I mean, there's not much hardcore stuff here. Mm -hmm. There's some interesting points, but there's not a lot. Basically, just more interconnectivity. How people are just saying how much it our entire society relies on inter interconnectivity. Uh, um, there's this guy who did like 3D printers. Uh, I like 3D printers. Yeah. They're great. Um, I, I, I'm definitely yeah. My money's in that court as well. 3D printers are going to be big. Yeah. So you only need just a basic thing that just, you know, we already got printing plastic, so. Yeah, and stainless steel. Ah, stainless steel as well. Yeah, for since Hells, like yeah. 2000 something. That's it, we just need a basic consumer model, you know, start getting it out there and then share that on the net. You know how the anti-piracy ads, you would not download a car. It's like, <laughs> well, yes, I would if I could, I really would. <laughs> well, I love how it's going over source, like MakerBot is really the yeah. guys that are taking it off. You know, it's not, it's a thousand bucks and you can be off yeah. and running. It's kind of sweet. Cool. What do you got? Uh, my one is ooh, pretty fantastic. We've spoken a little bit. Oh, I don't think we have actually spoken about this before. This is a video from the ICT Institute for Creative Technologies. They've got this new 3D video uh, teleconferencing system. And it's pretty fantastic. It's like an actual hologram of someone talking. And so you actually see their head suspended. And um, cool. yeah, pretty fantastic. And it's, a, it's not simple, but the concept is you can understand it. They've just got a... a 
least piece of like a display, a glass or something, 3D display, that it spins really, really fast at about a 45 degree angle, and so you can actually do it all the way around. And then that actually just shows the hologram. So you can't interact with it, you can't touch it because it is a spinning bit of glass at about, you know, ah! 60, oh, here we go, it's a 30, 30 hertz is a 900 RPM. So it's oh. pretty, pretty fast. So, uh, yeah, pretty fantastic video. Like, you look at it, you can see it there. I won't play the video for you, of course, but, um, yeah. yeah, you can actually see her speaking. It's like her head is actually done there, and they do that with multiple cameras going around, and they project it onto it, which is pretty damn awesome. And uh, the great thing about this that I, I got actually pretty excited with, I was like, oh, yeah, this is pretty cool. You know, holograms are getting there. You can't interact with them, and fair enough. Yeah. But what they've actually done is this really ingenious way where that say that one head of a person is actually talking to say a group of three people. So imagine it was three of us here sitting on the sitting on the couch, and then the hologram was spinning where the camera is. So it was spinning like that. For all three of us, they've actually worked out a way that it would look like the hologram is looking and talking to us. It wouldn't be just like the hologram is only pointing at the person in the middle. Right. It'd be to all three people. And it's great how That's they've cool. done it, that they've actually got uh, multiple, or well, they've got like uh, multiple different uh, different hertz or something like that, that they have, it's spliced, like interlaced. So okay. since they're recording from all different angles, that so you only see like some bit of it when you're staring at it. I'm still not exactly sure how it worked, but yeah, it's all interlacing and stuff. And so, yeah, it actually displays it differently. Like this lovely picture on the side here about saying, yeah, the first 24 uh, subframes is to this person. Mm. Next one's to that. I think that brings up a lot of cool stuff that, I mean, it, it is just a camera, especially if they make it nice and cheap and easy, just to like a nice spinning thing and you get a hologram of someone in there. Yeah. It's kind of cool. That's in the glass bit. It'd be cool for like, um, you know, like military things. I'm just imagining, you know how they, they stand around a circle and it's all 3D. Oh, oh yeah. It comes up and you can plan tactical sort of yeah. operations. Well, even Otherwise, I, 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 I don't get the point of holograms. Well, it's just the it's other cool, way that... It's cool, but it's stupid. Well, think about, like, um, video conferencing or just talking to someone there that, I mean, if they could make this cheap enough that, I mean, essentially, there's not mm. not massively complex, but say for, like, you know, $500, you could buy this thing, then all you need is just, say, two cameras or something. You could actually speak to a person, they see a, a 3D representation of your head. And yeah. it's not just, uh, this is only teleconferencing, like, they can do it with any object. The head is just the latest part. Like, this concept's been around for a while, but... It's pretty damn awesome that now they're actually doing it with faces that are actually recording in real time. Because before you always had to program it in. Had like a sphere and car and stuff. Right. But yeah, check out the video. Um, I don't know, I was, I was kind of blown away. It's just pretty sweet. I would really, really love to see a consumer model or actually just see this out of the experimental face. Because mm. it's awesome. Cool. Uh, next one is IBM has got this computer they call Watson. And they're planning to have it play uh, a real game of Jeopardy against like real contestants this fall that's which great is, fall is autumn in the US yeah yes which means it's, it's like the fall week. it's in our spring, spring mm -hmm. which is toward yeah. the end of the year whatever yeah but um yeah they've been working on it since hmm, 2007 um and then they're running the, the the blue jean uh service that IBM's got uh, going on uh and it's just I think what it does, it looks for, it has a whole database of, of pre-recorded information. So they've basically fed it a whole bunch of databases and knowledge and information and then structured it somehow. And then what it does, when it's asked a question, it uses um, like a, some kind of natural language processing to work out what the words are being said. Mm -hmm. um, then pulls out those, those keywords and then it looks for an answer and works out a statistical probability of what the answer is likely to be. Yeah, and then it, it compiles that. And apparently, in the when it's actually doing the game, it does this in real time. So every time someone says something else, or the game changes a little bit, it's constantly reconfiguring its <laughs> its thing. But that's the whole cool. the whole thing is built on just mathematics, really. Yeah, that's all. That's all they're trying to do with this AI statistically, yeah. which is the right answer. Damn. Um, and there's a there's a cool thing on actually on the New York Times. You can go through and play like a, a flash game mm -hmm. of a, a previous recorded um, game, and you can see what it's doing. Huh. When it actually, because it asks a question, if you get it wrong, it shows you what. I, I'd like to, to play that because yeah, I've, I read the article. I did not know about the uh, actual flash game. Yeah. That's kind of sweet. 